I have not been able to say this at at all this year, but I'm going to say it right now. After the abysmal Raptors game, we sit here and we're going to talk about the Blue Jays crushing the Chicago White Sox 10-2. I feel so bad for Marcus Stroman. He gets two runs on two hits yesterday, gets nothing for him, and the Jays lose. Today, with Aaron Sanchez on the mound, Blue Jays get 10 runs on 15 hits. I feel so bad for Marcus Stroman. That guy is getting no run support at all. Speaking of Aaron Sanchez, we go, I think it was in the fourth inning, I think it was. And Aaron Sanchez, up until, up until this point, not pitching a bad ball game. Or maybe it was the fifth inning, I'm not too sure. When did Gavilio go out there? Let me see how, how far Aaron Sanchez went. He went three innings, so it was in the fourth inning. He gets pulled. And Charlie Montoya is going out to the mound, and he's doing like this. And I'm like, oh no. Or I think it was with the middle finger. It was like one of these. Blister on the middle finger for Aaron Sanchez. Yippee! So the blue... We can't have nice things, Jays fans. We just can't. You're up 10-2. You're crushing the White Sox. We're feeling good. Oh, no. Aaron Sanchez leaves the game with a damn blister. Great. But let's talk positives. There's got to be positives taken from this game. There has to be. In the first inning, Justin Smoke comes up and smoke bomb deep to uh, deep to right field. And it's gone. 398 feet of fastball up in the zone. Crushes it. And the Blue Jays have a 1-0 lead early against Ivan Nova, who in his last inning against the Blue Jays was dynamite. And then we go to the top of the second inning with Brandon Drury on base. Danny Jansen at the dish. Crushes the ball to center field. And it's gone. Jansen's first home run of the year. Great to see. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Great to see Danny Jansen get off the snide. And the Jays have a 3-0 lead. Ooh, we're feeling good right now, Jays fans. And we go to the top of the third inning. And the Blue Jays start a little rally going here in the top of the third inning. Uh, it starts off with a Vladdy Jr. walk. Then Smokey walks. The two on and nobody out. Rowdy Tellez flies out. That sucks. Then an infield single from Randall Gritchick. Um, everybody moves up. And the bases are loaded with one out. And Freddie Gallows up. He singles to center field. Guerrero comes in to score. Everybody moves up. And the bases are still loaded. It is a 4-0 Jays lead. And then Brandon Jury crushes the ball to center. And I'm like, oh, baby, grand slam. He catches it at the wall, but Smokey comes in to score. The Blue Jays up 5-0, and oh, they're feeling good. Next batter, Billy McKinney, he doubles to right field. Randall Gritchett comes in to score. Initially, Freddie Galvis went to third. They, uh, the, Tilson makes an error, th no, a throwing error, a horrendous throwing error. Uh, to th I, think was, I think he was going to second base. They miss it. And then it kind of rolls around to closer to third base. So Freddie's like, I'm going home. Freddie comes in to score. The Jays are just, just... I don't know what the heck's going on here. And the Jays are up 7 nothing in the top of the third. What the heck's happening? We go to the bottom of the third inning. Aaron Sanchez has some trouble. Gives up a couple runs. But you're still up 7-2, so you're feeling okay. So what, are the, what happens after you give up two runs? Vladimir Guerrero Jr. comes up with Eric Sogard on base. And he belts one. Deep to center field and a jump by uh, I think it was uh, Garcia I think it was at the at the wall and it goes in and out of his glove and over the wall <laughs> for a two run shot for Vladdy and we're like oh baby things are going great for the Jays they got a nine two lead in the top of the fourth whoa we're feeling good and Vladdy technically it's a two run shot even though it kind of should have been robbed in and out but it. That doesn't, they don't call that on the stat sheet. They call it a two-run shot, and the Jays got a 9-2 lead. Then we go into the, um, with the, the the bottom half of the fourth inning. Aaron Sanchez back on the mound, and what happens? He hits James McCann with the first pitch, and then on a wild pitch, McCann moves up. Then he walks Mc, uh, Delmonico, and then he gets pulled. 9-2 Jays lead. Injury for Aaron Sanchez. They can't have nice things, I'm telling you. Brutal. 
Sammy Gavilio comes in and is absolutely spectacular. We go ahead to the, bottom, the top of the fifth inning, and Eric Sogard doubles. Billy McKinney comes in to score, and the Blue Jays add on. It's a 10-2 game, and the bullpen takes care of the business the rest of the way. Sam Gavilio goes three strong innings, gives up one hit, one walk, and a strikeout, but no runs given up. His three innings, dropping his ERA to 1.76. Gavilio has been dynamite. For the Blue Jays. And Javi Guerra actually comes in. Throws three innings. Gives up a couple of hits in those three innings. But doesn't walk a batter. Doesn't give up any runs. Strikes out a couple. Great job by Javi Guerra. And the Blue... And he actually picks up the save in the ball game. Because he pitched three innings. And the Blue Jays come away with a 10-2 win. But all our focus now turns to Aaron Sanchez. Who we're all scared is going to hit the DL with a damn blister. Like I said, we can't have nice things, people. Now, let's talk about the bats. Eric Sogard, two for five with an RBI and a run scored. Vladdy, one for four. He also walked in the ballgame. Couple RBIs, gets the two-run shot. Scores a couple uh, scores a couple runs as well for Vladdy. Had a boy. Uh, Justin Smoke uh, has, obviously, the smoke bomb early in the game. And then he walks three times, scores a couple runs. Great job by Justin Smoke. Rowdy Telez goes one for five. Tough night for Rowdy. Randall Gritchick goes two for five uh, with a run scored in the game. He's in 250. If Gritchick can give me 250 and 20 plus home runs, sure. <laughs> I'm not going to complain ever about Randall Gritchick at that point. Uh, Freddie Galvez one for five with the RBI single there. I think it was in the third inning. And um, and uh, Brandon Drury goes one for four. And Billy McKinney, have a day, Billy. Four for five with an RBI and a run scored. Billy McKinney's first four hit game in the big leagues. And like I said, he goes four for five. Boosting that batting average up to 248. What was it going into the game? 224. A good job by Billy McKinney doing that. And Danny Jansen, you know, coming up last year, he was the Jays' top five, one of the Jays' top five prospects. And he did pretty well with the Blue Jays to start his young career. He was a great catcher, had a great arm. We're like, man, this guy's our future. This, this is a great catcher right here. And in the start of the season, he's really, really struggled with the offense. But you see what happened today. He gets the two-run shot. And I think he has a double as well, or he, at least he gets another hit. He ends up going two for four, scores a couple, or scores a run, gets a couple RBIs, uh, hits a home run. He, he strikes out once, but he also walks in the game as well. So going into the game, Danny Jansen's batting average was 160, and that's terrible. It jumps 13 spots to 173. Is on bases 261. Again, he, oh, you just want to see progression from uh, from Danny Jansen. But positive things for the offense for the Blue Jays. Now let's hit the minor leagues because guys, as much as we love that Jays win today, the minor leagues are what really keeps us sane in this world. Let's go to the Dunedin Blue Jays here, where Ryan Noda, if you guys remember him last year, I think he had like a 250 average there in Lansing, but he walked a like a bazillion times. It was stupid. Uh, he ended up going two for four in the game today for the Dunedin Blue Jays. He's in 262 uh, there in Dunedin, so good to see you there. That guy, Kirk Alejandro Kirk, I was talking about yesterday, he went one for three in the game today with a walk as well. He's still hitting 407. Keep an eye on him. And uh, where is it here? Where's the pitching? Uh, Santi or Maximo Castillo, again, 2021 year old pitcher there in Dunedin. He went six innings, gave up seven hits, two runs, two were earned. Not too bad. Six innings of two run ball, not bad. Walked, he didn't walk a batter, struck out four. And his ERA, again, 20 to 21 years old, is 2.59. In, in Dunedin. Again, another guy that you might see to get the call up to uh, AAA this year. He's pitched, he's had eight starts. It's not a very small sample size. Very good to see from, from Maximo Castillo there in uh, in Dunedin. You go to the Lansing Lug Nuts here. And uh, Kevin Smith, we talked about him in, in the last few videos at least. About kind of finding his bat as of late. He goes one for three with a couple RBIs in the game today. Scores a run, batting average up to 178 for uh, Kevin Smith. Riley Adams, one of the Blue Jays' prospect catchers. He went one for three. Chad Spanberger, once again, acquired in the Sung 1-0 trade. He went one for three with a couple RBIs and a, and a run scored. Good to see there. And on the mound, uh, Zach Lowe, again, another guy. He's probably like 23 years old, but he's in double-A already. Uh, he had he went six and a third, gave up six hits, two runs, uh, walked a couple, struck out six guys. Three 0.50 ERA there in, in, in New Hampshire. Not a bad little player. I mean, will he become anything? Who the heck knows? But another guy to kind of add to that system. Good to see you down there for uh, for Zach Lowe. And then we go to the Buffalo Bisons, where I think a lot of Jays fans are keeping their eyes right now. You know why? Anthony Alford, he went one for four in the game. Good to see him get another hit today. Uh, Teoscar Hernandez. 
in his, uh, I want to say Bison's debut, but then again, Bison's debut for the season, I guess. He was one for five, but he did get a couple RBIs, and he, he did struck out once. Uh, but he, he got a run. He scored a run. He got a couple RBIs, went one for five. Again, you want to get his confidence back up. Lourdes Gurriel went one for four with an RBI. Kevin Biggio, two for five with an RBI and a run scored. Ben Revere, the man, went two for four. He's hitting 258 there in, uh, in Buffalo. I still want to see him do really, really well. And Sean Reed Foley has not been good all year long. And he continues to struggle. Went six innings, give up two hits. But he gave up five runs and three were earned. Walked three and struck out five. Sean Reed Foley, we've learned now with him that throwing strikes is a real issue. And um, we just got to keep letting him develop, I guess. That's really about it. So, guys, that's going to do it for this one. If you guys enjoyed this video and you guys enjoyed the ball game today, smack that like button. I do appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button if you guys have not already. Comment down below your thoughts on the game, the video. Any of the young ones that I just talked about? How do you feel about the Jays' performance today? Anybody you liked? Anybody you didn't like? Billy McKinney, once again, with a career-high four hits in the ball game there today. Your thoughts on him? Your thoughts on the Vladdy home run? And your thoughts on uh, the Aaron Sanchez uh, blister again? I want to hear your guys' thoughts on all that stuff, guys. Comment down below all that great stuff. And Evan and I will talk to you guys' podcast edition Probably going to be Tuesday afternoon. Links are in the description for the podcast channel and for the podcast itself on iTunes. Twitter is also down below. Follow up. Send me a DM, guys. Do all that great stuff. And um, my main man, Mo Buckets, on Twitter. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram. Again, he posted the highlight to the Vladimir Guerrero Jr. home run. Not long after the home run got hit by Vladdy. He's amazing. Quick content, quality content, and a great guy doing the work. Please, guys, go check it out. Blue Jays Wave on Instagram if you guys have not already. All right. So, guys, I will talk to you guys. Raptors edition. I still got the hat here. Still got the Raptors hat here because I'm trying to hang on to some playoff hope. Um, as they take on the Milwaukee Bucks in Game 3 at Scotiabank Arena on Sunday night. 7 o'clock tip-off there, like I said, at Scotiabank Arena. Must win for the Toronto Raptors. You lose, you're down 3 nothing. You win, you're at least still in it at 2-1. to one. So, for the Raptors, you got to find a way to win Game 3 at home and for the Toronto Blue Jays they played game three of the four game set against the um Chicago White Sox tomorrow afternoon 2 10 first pitch we have no idea who the starter is in tomorrow's game we initially thought it was probably gonna be like a bullpen type of game actually but Clayton Richard actually we've heard would pitch for Buffalo he's gonna pitch for Buffalo tomorrow so he might be coming up very soon and I'm, I mean, I'm not like excited to watch him pitch, but I'm excited to actually have a healthy starting pitcher because that might be at the flipping cost right now. Who do we got now? Clay Buckle? No, he's on the DL. Stroman. If Sanchez hits the DL, who the heck's the starters? My God, it's rough for the Toronto Blue Jays right now when it comes to the injury front, especially. When it comes to the pitchers, uh, as the Jays take on the uh, Lucas Giolito and the Chicago White Sox tomorrow afternoon, 2 10 first pitch there in Chicago. It's a four game set, so the Blue Jays win tomorrow. They at least get the split in the four game set, all right? So thank you guys so much for listening and watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you guys then.